In this video, I'll be teaching you how to create menus in Takeinter. So what are menus? Well, menus are a drop-down list of program-related commands or options from which the user can select from. Uh, unlike other widgets, the menu is actually a fixed embedded kind of widget that's located at the top right corner of the screen. If you don't already know what I'm talking about, you'll understand once we actually begin. Like a very common example of a menu is the file menu that comes with the open, load, save, exit features. So let's begin. We'll call our menu main menu. Created using tk.widget name, in this case menu. Parent, self frame. Right. So think of the menu as a container and within which we'll be adding different features, different widgets. We can either add a command in a menu, we can either add buttons in the menu even, we can add all kinds of different things. So one of the things that we'll be looking at and which is most commonly used in menus is a command. So we'll be adding a command within our menu using add command. We can give it a label like save, okay? And let's go ahead and give it a function too because this is a command, right? Uh, so it needs to have a function. It's like a button. It's like a, a labeled button. So we'll just call it self.safe for now. Let's just quickly copy this and create a few more. Now we'll call this one load. Exit. And yeah, let's just rename these. And for the exit, I'm going to do something special. I'm going to write self.master.destroy. Right. Now, before I run this code, I need to actually create these functions. Otherwise, I'll throw an error. I'm not going to add anything within these functions because, well, that's for if you're really serious about creating something. So we'll just add some placeholders like this is the save function. If you were doing this in reality, like if you were actually creating a proper menu. So then you might add a file dialog within the save function in which you take a file location or something along those lines. And what am I doing here? This is self.load. There'll be a video link for file dialogs in the description as well, so be sure to check that out. This is the load function. Right. So let's run this menu now and see how it all goes. Oh wait, I almost forgot. We didn't do the most important step, which is actually adding the menu into the Tikinder window. We use config and menu is equal to main self.main menu. Right, so what this does basically is config is I've mentioned this in previous videos, config is used to alter the state of a current GUI element or GI widget, or well, in this case, the Tikinter instance as well. So we can assign it a menu right here. And just so you know, there can only be one menu, okay? And here we go. Here's our Tikinter window. We can click save here or load or if you want to exit, exit. Uh, the destroy command here actually destroys the Tikinter instance. Uh, there'll be more on this in a video in the description link. So what if you want to add a menu, like a drop-down menu? Like, actually, look at this right here. This is the standard Python IDE, and we can see these menus right here. Like, there's uh, a, like a drop-down list of commands. How do we do that? How do we, instead of just making three options over here, how do we make nested menus? Well, we'll discuss that right now. We'll be starting off with a new example. So, so let's just delete this, all right? And uh, delete this up to here, or just up to here, really. And let's let's figure. Out, let's begin creating nested menus. So, how are we going to create nested menus? Well, it's actually quite simple. We're just going to create one main menu and then we're going to create several smaller or just one, just one uh, sub menu 
and then we'll put these menu or menus within the main menu. So that way we have nested menus. It's just like nested areas, really. So let's begin. We're going to quickly copy paste this line and create a new menu. This is our sub menu. Let's call it file menu. Let's just quickly change these. All right. So now these three commands are within the file menu. Now, how are we going to add this menu within our main menu? Well, we're going to use the add cascade function for that. And remember, we're going to do this on the main menu. All right. Don't do it on the sub menu. Uh, cascade basically allows you to add a sub menu into a main menu. All right. Again, it has a label. Well, it's called one file. All right. And the second parameter is menu, which and we'll just pass in the name, the menu we created, self dot file menu. All right. Let's just quickly run this and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, my bad. We are missing these functions. So let's just quickly recreate those. Or really, uh, considering that we're going to be creating a lot more right now, how about we just create a function called empty function? And just this is an empty function. Because we don't, there's, there's no real point in creating a dozen different functions when we're not going to be doing anything with them, right? So let's just assign them all empty function. Except, except exit right here, because that's actually something we can run. We don't have to create that. We don't have to create that function ourselves. And again, we missed out the config. So let's just do that. Config menu is equal to main. We're still going to be assigning main menu here. Because remember, file menu just goes within the main menu with that cascade. Again, here's our file menu. We can click on and we can see the three options we created. All right, so what is this exactly? Well, this is something weird called tear off, which, well, let's just click on it and see what happens. And there, you can see it just tore itself off. But personally, I don't really like this option, so I recommend you turn it off using tear off is equal to zero. And let's run this. And as we can see, it looks better. Now, another neat trick I want to teach you is the separator. Just like you can add commands, you can also add a separator between different commands. So let's just do that. Add separator. And let's run this. And there. It looks much nicer. Like, you can use this to sort of group commands. Because save and load are clearly similar, right? So uh, it looks a bit awkward keeping them so close to exit, which is completely, completely different. So similarly, you, you can use the separator between groups of different commands. All right, so let's just quickly create another menu. We'll call this one, let's call it the tool menu. And let's create it the same way we did for our file menu. Self.frame will turn the tier off to zero. Turn it off. And let's just begin adding some uh, commands right in. All right, so as a quick review, we've added three things currently to our menu. We've discussed how to add three things. The add command, add separator, and add cascade. We'll be taking a look at one or two more by the end of this video, right? Uh, so label, let's just call this one uh, a debugger because this is a tool menu. Again, because we don't want to actually create a separate function, we'll just assign this empty function. Self.file menu, add command, label is equal to find, another very common tool. Self.empty function. So let's just leave it at that and add this into the main menu. Add cascade. 
need a label we'll call this again the tools okay menu is equal to self dot sorry tool menu let's run this now and there you go here's our debugger and find command within the tool menu and the file menu has the save load and exit commands Another name for this kind of menu creation, I guess, it would be hierarchical menus, and you know, menus in a hierarchy. So, well, that's about it for this, I guess. So let's just discuss some other customizations and other features that you can add within your menus. But with this, uh, the core functionality of the menus has been covered. So let's discuss two more commands that we can add to our take enter menu. The first is the add ready button command, and the second is the add check button command. As the name implies, we can use these commands to basically bring in functionality for the ready buttons and check buttons within our, within our menu. It's not the literal ready button and check button, but it's the core concept behind them. If you don't remember uh, what a ready button and check button is, I highly recommend you check out the video linked in the description below. So let's create a third menu where we'll be trying out these new commands, right? We'll call this one misc menu for miscellaneous menu. Self.frame, frame gear off zero. Self dot misc menu dot add ready button. We'll just show you ready buttons here because check buttons are pretty much the same thing with just a slight difference, right? Let's just call this option one. We'll give it a value of one and the variable, of course. We have to create a variable class where we will store this value self.var is equal to tk.intvar, intvar because we gave it an integer value, otherwise, it'll be string var, right? Self.var, assign it right here, and command. So let's go ahead and create a new function first. Let's call this retval, retrieve value, because uh, at least in this example, we want the function to retrieve the value of the ready one and print it out on screen, right? So we'll do just that, self.var, the variable class, we'll use the get function on it, print out its value, self.retval, right? Let's just quickly copy paste this right here option two and that's it actually that's all we have to do and yeah let's quickly add this to our menu all right main menu cascade we'll call this misc short form and misc menu okay let's run this And there we go. Here's our third menu. You can see our two options here. So what happens when you click on it? You can already see some extra space over there. Uh, so what happens when you click? Well, we have one printed out over there. Why one? Because we gave the value of the first ready button, you know, in this case, option one. Okay, why is a slight mistake here? Right, because we gave both of them the value one, I did not change that. Sorry. So we need to keep different values here, otherwise uh, there's no distinguishing feature left. And let's click option one here, and we have one printed out. Uh, let's click option two now. And as you can see, we have option two printed out. And true to its nature as a ready button, the only one of them was selected. So no matter how many ready buttons you add here, you can only select one of them. The difference with uh, check buttons on, their on the other hand is that you can select as many of them as you want. Of course, with uh, check buttons, just keep in mind that they do not share the same variable. So if you create two check buttons, you need to create two variable classes as well. There are still obviously a few other things, a few other options and different parameters you can take a look at. But that's just about it for this video. I think we've covered everything that you might realistically need while creating a decently sized GUI application. All right, so that's, that's it for this video. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe because we'll be 
releasing many, many more in the future.